Hi, my name is Joy Stafford and I'm the co-founder and studio manager of Print to the People, a social enterprise dedicated to the production and promotion of traditional printmaking processes based in Norwich. In 2018, I went on a research trip to America where I visited print studios and other creative businesses out there. In this video, I'm going to talk a bit about my trip and the places I visited along the way. So back in 2009, as a recent graduate working towards setting up my own print studio, Print to the People, um, and wanting to expand upon my letterpress knowledge by volunteering at the John Jowell Print Museum, I was always looking to American designers and studios to see how it was done, as they seemed to be at the forefront of the print resurgence. And in the time before everyone had an Instagram account, they were just a lot more visible than anything that was happening in the UK at the time. As my career as a printmaker grew, so did the worldwide print community and so did my desire to visit some of the places and people I'd been following for years. Everything fell into place in order to make the trip possible at the beginning of 2018, with Print to the People being in a stable enough position that I could take a three month sabbatical and more importantly I'd got some funding in place and saved up enough money to make the trip possible. So I applied for and was lucky enough to get £5,000 from the Artists International Development Fund, which was run by the Arts Council. It's now called Develop Your Creative Practice. Um, and I also got uh, £200 from the John Jowell Trust to go towards the trip. Um, I've made another little video where I talk a bit more about funding and some tips on, how, on applying for funding, which is also on this channel if you want to have a look at that. Um, so America's a pretty big place. Uh, and to begin with, when planning my trip, I was thinking that I'd maybe try and visit as many places as possible, but the more I looked into it, I realised that would be quite expensive. And also the trip was meant to be sort of a break from my everyday life. And in my everyday life, I'm pretty busy. I'm always rushing around. So I just didn't want the trip to be like that. I kind of wanted it to be more laid back and I really wanted to spend time in some places and get to know people there. Um, so I decided that I'd go for just visiting two places. Um, so I went for Portland in Oregon and Nashville in Tennessee. My reason for picking uh, Portland was one, I'm a massive fan of Portlandia, <laughs> and two, in terms of the resurgence of craft and handmade things, which printmaking is a part of, Portland has always been at the forefront of this DIY movement. Um, it was one of the first places to have bike lanes, recycling, craft beer, all that sort of stuff. So I thought it'd be a pretty interesting place to visit all round. Nashville is the home of Hatch Show Print, a 140 year old letterpress shop. So that has always been top of my list of places to visit. And I was lucky enough to get to spend three months working there as part of their internship program, which I'll talk more about later in this video. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about each place I visited so you can get a little taste of what they're about. And accompanying this video is a sheet you can download, which has links uh, to all of them, if you want to find out more. And I also did a blog uh, of the trip, which has full interviews of the people I met on it. So Portland. The first place I visited in Portland was C.C. Stern Type Foundry, which is named after Chris Stern, a printer and teacher who started the foundry, and after he died, the letterpress community worked together to make his collection into this working museum, run by volunteers, all passionate about keeping the machines going and passing on their knowledge. Their focus is on metal type and casting equipment, and when I visited them, I was lucky enough to see Joe and Jeff using their monotype Orphan Annie Sorts Caster to cast using molten lead, which I had never seen before. I then visited the IPRC, or Independent Publishing Resource Centre, which has been going for 20 plus years and is very much at the heart of Portland's DIY scene. It's similar in many ways to Print to the People as they run courses and have open access facilities, but with a focus on publishing. So they have Rhizo printers and this massive zine library, as well as a screen print and letterpress set up. They are very much a communal community studio space and have around 50 volunteers who man it so it can be open all the time. Then I went to Magnetic North Studios, which, since my visit, has had to move premises, so it's now called True North Studios. Walker, the studio manager there, showed me around and we made a print together. It's expanded a bit since they moved, but when I visited, there were around 15 studio holders who all had individual spaces for their different practices. Then they also had a more communal wood workshop and print studio, and they all seemed to collaborate a lot on projects and community events. Next up, Ablation, Papers and Press. So this is a commercial shop in the warehouse district of Portland, but within the shop they had these windows which acted as dividers so you could see through to the workshops at the back of the shop, where on one side they had a paper making studio where they made their own cotton papers by hand using recycled remnants from the garment industry, which they then printed on in their letterpress studio which was on the other side of the space. They have been going for 30 years and it was really interesting to hear from Rich, the owner, how the shop in Portland had evolved over the years. 
Then it was on to misplaced screen printing, which consisted of a shop selling awesome screen printed goods at the front and a screen print studio in the back. They very much grew out of the DIY band scene in Portland, and most of their business is through printing band merchandise. Outlet is the studio of illustrator Kate Bingham Burt, but the space also houses a shop and zine library, as well as hosting workshops and pop-up events. It's also home to four Rhizo printers, Barbara, Jolene, Marge and Little Tina, which people can come and use to work on their own projects once they've been on a workshop. Next, Scout Books, which was founded in 2009. Chloe gave me a tour of their factory where they print, bind and ship custom-designed Scout notebooks across the globe. They believe in using their business as a force for good and have recently been certified as a B Corp, which is the business equivalent of what fair trade is to coffee. And walking around, you can really see that in action, in how efficient and happy everyone is and how little waste is created. Fruit Salad Club described themselves as being an unapologetically fun and silly studio, gallery, community and education space, shop and friendly little art clubhouse. This definitely comes across in the vibe of the space and it was amazing to see what you could do with a smaller space and hear about all the awesome collaborations and projects they had worked on. Stumptown Printers also grew from Portland's DIY music scene, specialising in the design, manufacture and printing of album covers, custom packaging, cards and posters. They have been doing their thing since 1999 and their aim is to produce quality printing that will be cherished for generations by honouring the traditions of the golden age of print. I was also lucky enough to squeeze in a visit to PNCA, the Pacific Northwest College of Art, and boys are glad I did, as their printmaking facilities were amazing. Heather, the studio manager, showed me around and explained their ethos of immersing the students in both traditional and contemporary processes and ideas, while emphasising high standards of craftsmanship and professional practice. As a student at PNCA, you can explore intaglio, lithography, relief, screen print, monotype, letterpress, bookmaking, risograph, as well as digital and 3D printing, and they even have a separate printmaking workshop for MA students. And last but not least on my Portland tour was Radius Studios. It's a community space offering workshops and facilities for anybody serious or curious about art, which is a great mission statement. So upstairs they had a multifunctional space which was mostly used for painting, drawing and printmaking classes. Then downstairs they had a large ceramic studio which is one of the most popular processes with over 100 students a week going through that area. So I'd spent a month in Portland looking around those places and then I flew across to Nashville to start my internship at Hat Show Print which I'll talk about a bit more later but here's a little bit about some of the places I visited in Nashville. Friendly Arctic is a print and design shop in East Nashville which, as their name suggests, is super friendly. Not only to visitors from the UK, but in their eco-friendly business philosophy and community mindedness. They started out 10 years ago in true DIY fashion, screen printing band t-shirts in a garage, but nowadays they screen print all kinds of things for clients across the country. I was very lucky that when I was in Nashville, Carlos Hernandez and Bill Fick were passing through town as part of the Speedball Roadshow, which was hosted in the Vanderbilt University Art Department. So I got to see them both talk about their work and career paths and also take part in a really inspiring print workshop, best described by Carlos as a print orgy, where we combine screen printing, mono printing and lino printing. Plate Tone is a community print studio who believe in empowering artists through studio access, workshops and exhibitions. I visited them after they had just moved to a new location and were in the process of unpacking. They are very similar to print to the people with their focus being on open access, courses and community events. Fort Houston describe themselves as being like a gym, but for people who make stuff with their hands. They are a true makerspace, and membership to their facilities gives you access to a full-scale wood workshop, metal shop, photo studio, screen print station, co-working space, as well as an on-site cafe, gallery, and shop. The space is used by different creatives, often to start off a business before moving on to their own space or shop. Isle of Printing is the brainchild of Bryce McLeod and his philosophy of using the positive power of creativity to make our world a more interesting place is something that shines through in all his projects. He works a lot with other local community businesses to make engaging public art and his studio is a veritable treat of creativeness for the eyes. Next, Turnip Green, where it's all about fostering creativity and sustainability through reuse. They have four main areas of operation – a Donate What You Can retail store, an education outreach program, a green gallery and an artist support program. 
In the past two years, they have educated 45,000 people through their recycling and zero waste workshops in schools and workplaces. It was truly inspiring to visit this organisation and hear about all their great work. Then on to Grand Palace, a screen print and design shop who print clothing and posters. They started out in Fort Houston and as their business grew, they moved out to the Hill Creative Community, a building which is home to a variety of creative businesses and practitioners. There's a great feeling of collaboration here with many tenants working together on projects and products. Elephant Gallery was the last place I visited in Nashville and I was gutted I didn't find it sooner as it's such a brilliant and inspiring space. The gallery puts on group and solo shows in any medium or style throughout the year. I visited when their clown show was on, which was, you guessed it, an open submission show about clowns. I just loved how the work on show took over the whole building, allowing you to get totally immersed in the subject matter and feel the passion of the artists and people running the space. In the back is a shop called Antita, selling work by local creatives. Now on to my internship at Hatch Show Print. Hatch run five internships throughout the year, and they vary in length from two weeks to two months. I was accepted on the full programme, which is for September and October. Each program has four interns on it and it's a full-time position. Candidates vary from students and graduates to people like myself to artists from different disciplines like painters or sculptors. To get accepted on the program you have to submit a physical portfolio, no digital witchcraft as their website suggests, and what they are looking for is ideas and creativity rather than experience. Hatch is 140 years old and spent most of that time situated on the Broadway amongst the honky-tonk bars. Seven years ago, they moved just around the corner to the Country Music Hall of Fame. So the shop is within this massive building that houses a museum, restaurant, hotel and concert hall. All the fittings and fixtures from the old shop were moved, including the inky radiator and staff fridge. So entering through the gates really is like stepping back in time. And working there, you do feel like a bit like an exhibit in a museum due to the large glass windows that allow passers-by to see what's going on in the shop. Tours would also run four times a day, with visitors getting to see live printing on the front presses before being taken through to the education room where they would get to pull a print themselves on a small proofing press. The motto at Hatch is preservation through production, so it's a working museum with a staff of 10 designer printers all working on multiple poster commissions. As an intern you would end up working independently on live briefs, which was amazing and terrifying at the same time. So after an initiation week of learning our way around the shop by dissing old jobs, we were given our first live brief to work on as a group, The Naked Magicians, which was a comedy magic show for Deepak, a venue in Durham, North Carolina. I'm going to run through some of the posters I worked on so you can see the variety of different events that came through the shop. Then I'll talk more about how we worked on each brief. My next project I worked on as a pair with Laurel, one of the other interns, and this was for a double headline event, a football game and a concert in Jacksonville. And the customer wanted the posters to join up so they worked as a pair which is very tricky for only our second poster. Then, also with Laurel, I got to work on this Joan Byers poster, again for Deepak. So Hatch has certain venues which they'll do posters for every event they do, like Deepak, and also the Ryman and the Opry in Nashville. Then on to my first solo project, a band called Here Come the Mummies, because they dressed, well, like mummies, on stage, and played terrifying funk from beyond the grave. This was a very fun brief to work on, even if I did decide to be ambitious and try my first furniture build to get the pyramid shape, which was a real nightmare to make ready, but I did learn a lot. Next, Sweetheart the Rodeo for Deepak, which was also fun as I got to work with all the brilliant cowboy images and symbols that Hatch has in its vast collection. The Matthew West and Jeremy Camp show, which was a double headline gig, so I did the poster so that it could go either way up, depending on who your favourite act was. The last poster I got to work on at Hatch was for the Flying Monkey Marathon, an annual marathon which has a different theme each year reflected in the poster design. The 2018 theme was Pokemon Go and I had real fun trying to recreate that sort of feel in this poster. And this was also my three colour design which was a bit nerve wracking triple checking all the layout measurements. So when you get a job in, you get a brown envelope with a job sheet in it which has the copy for the poster and any other design requests from the client. There is only one computer at Hatch for all the 10 designers, so that means that the whole design process is carried out by hand, which is something I got out of the habit of doing from uni, but actually I found it really refreshing to get back into. The first stage is to do a bit of research on the band or event, then start sketching out ideas quickly on small bits of card just with a pencil. The idea of these is so you can simply show someone else your idea and so that you can start working out text hierarchy. 
At this point, you might start looking at some specific type or imagery. For example, for Joan Baez, we knew we wanted a folk style type, so we started pulling out different options so we could see how those choices might affect the layout. For the sweetheart of the radio, I knew I wanted to use some of the cowboy imagery and that I wanted there to be a big 50 in there, so I started looking at that, how that might sit within the size of the paper I was using. Then it's just a case of using Hatch's vast resource of type images and furniture to build your poster. All the designers that work there are walking curators and know exactly where to find each font and image, but for us interns there was a bit of hunting to do to find what we wanted, as there isn't a guide or map or manual to where everything is. But with each drawer holding a veritable delight of wooden type and ornaments, we didn't mind too much having to hunt around. Even if a poster is going to be printed in two colours, it is built as much as possible as one layer at this initial stage. Then a proof is taken with black ink on tracing paper. A photograph is taken of the proof. Then, if you can get on a computer, in Photoshop you take the photo and separate it out into the layers, purely so you can send a digital proof to the client to approve. Digital proofs are sent out in black and white, with the colour layers um, grey scaled. Then your job goes on to the stack, waiting for client approval and a press to be free for you to print on. While you wait for approval and a press, you would start work on another brief, so you would have four or five orders on the go at once. Here is my sweetheart of the rodeo poster being printed on the Celebrity Press, a Van der Cook Universal 1, so called because it's the press or the celebrity sign when they visit the shop. The first layer would get set up on the press, printed, then the second layer. Hatch has a rule that designs can have a maximum of three layers. Most of the posters that come through the shop were two colours. Once dry, the posters would get trimmed and packaged up with the designer who started the job following it the whole way through to the end. The phrase, time flies when you're having fun, has never been truer than with my time at Hatch, as before I knew it, it was time for me to head back to the UK. It really was a once in a lifetime experience that I will never forget. It taught me so much as an artist and designer, and I'm already planning my next trip back there. While I was on the trip, I kept the sketchbook diary, which is a visual record of the places I went, things I ate and drank, and my other experiences, which you can see all of if you head over to my blog. Since returning to the UK, I approached Norwich Art Centre about doing some posters for their gigs. They are screen printed rather than letterpress, as I just don't have that bigger letterpress set up, but I am working on that. And I have tried to keep some of that hatch mentality with them, working quickly and trusting my instincts. If you head over to my website, you can see more of those. So uh, that about sums up my talk. Thanks for watching and listening. So as I said at the beginning, there's a sheet you can download with links to all the places I visited uh, back on the Print of the People website, if you're interested in finding out more about any of them. Um, these videos have been free to watch, but if you feel like donating some money or buying something from our Etsy shop, again, if you head back to our website, there's information on how you can do that there. Uh, these videos have been made possible thanks to um, emergency funding from the Arts Council Emergency Response Fund, supported by National Lottery Players. So we just want to say a big thank you to them for making that happen.